Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Let's go through first <clears throat> what's going on right now as we have a fairly intense storm down here uh, off the Carolina coast. And you can see it where it is. It's offshore by a couple of hundred miles. If it was tucked in a little bit more, we probably would be getting into some of the heavier snow bands that are showing up on the radars right now just offshore. But uh, as we move along, this is the, the uh, NAM model. And it uh, snow shifts over Long Island and then and in the next couple of hours during this evening, and then it's gone. And then we have the upper air disturbance that's coming through. It doesn't really show any measurable down to our latitude, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few snow showers come through real quickly during the overnight and very early tomorrow morning. And then in comes the cold air that's going to be with us for the next couple of days. So at this point, let's <clears throat> shift over to uh, the GFS. And I'm going to do the European next after this so we can get a, uh, a flavor of what's going on for later this week because it's already all over the, the Internet anyway. So let's discuss. Okay, so this is now Wednesday, and there is a lead low that comes out uh, into the Ohio Valley. But you can see it doesn't really have much support with it. It kind of falls apart, mainly because there's only so much room in the atmosphere, and you've got this storm way offshore, and you already have the next storm that's getting ready uh, coming out of the plane. So that low just dies out. Uh, maybe if a little bit of it survives, we wind up with a flurry or two here on Wednesday or Wednesday night. And then we have a developing low that uh, heads uh, into western Kentucky and then redevelops. Uh, the GFS run today is weaker than the previous run by a little bit. It takes a low out uh, off the uh, Virginia coast and moves it northeast. <clears throat> and, you know, we would get a fairly moderate event out of this, I suppose, and then out it goes. And this is for Saturday. Um, the European, now we're not going to be able to see everything that it shows uh, in terms of precip, but it has a very deep low uh, east of the Maryland coast. And I looked at the temperature profiles that the model is showing, and it would be cold enough for mostly snow here. Uh, this would be uh, for Friday night into Saturday morning. This is the map for Saturday morning. It has a fairly intense low. There's plenty of cold air that's lodged in overhead, and then the low moves out uh, to the uh, east-northeast, south of southeast of Montauk, south of Cape Cod, and gone. So this would be a pretty sizable snowfall if this were to verify. <clears throat> then we'll go to the Canadian model, and it has a similar idea, uh, a fairly deep low uh, just off of Atlantic City. It's a little tucked in a little further north, and you can see how it uh, moves out to the east. And I'll switch to the precip map so you can, we can see what this one does. And we'll back it up just a little bit. And you can see track a little further north, so probably bring some rain into central New Jersey and southward, keeps it all snow for New York and Long Island. And then it moves away to the northeast. So all three bottles have this, and I, I think... You know, to kind of start going off the deep end over what's going to happen in terms of amounts right now is really not appropriate. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to look here at the upper air. You can see that this is a pretty, this is all really in the southern stream that, that you have this very well-developed low. And you've got, uh, you see how the winds across upstate New York and New England here are westerly. So that keeps it from going up uh, to our west, if that's correct. And then... It pulls out along the coast, stays progressive enough so that you're not dealing with um, too much warm air coming up the eastern seaboard, and out it goes. That's the uh, Canadian view, and now we'll look at the Europeans' view, and you can you can see on this one has a very vigorous upper air system moving into western Kentucky that it takes uh, east or slightly east northeast. Same idea here with uh, the west northwest winds across northern new england so that keeps this from going up to our left and then it goes out and done so i i really think that the takeaway actually you know what we just got a couple little time here so we'll do the gfs too and you know the gfs has probably a slightly less developed upper feature as it moves along and it does have it less developed but it still has the same idea so uh, the models are all pointing to something for the end of the week and the weekend. Um, whether it's a, a moderate event as the GFS would have or if it's going to be something more uh, major as the other two models have remains to be seen. 
Um, so we've got something on the table here. Let's see how it all plays out now, model-wise, over the next few days. Nothing is imminent. We know how this winter has been. If this had been, if this were a winter where we've already would have had uh, snow, you certainly would feel more confident when models show things like this. But given the kind of winter we've had, I think we need to be cautious and uh, going forward in terms of how this all evolves. Okay, so nobody get too excited yet as far as. Uh, all of this goes, whether you want snow or don't want snow, uh, we've got to see how the models play it all out. I'm trying to be reasonable about this, nothing here is hypable in my view, um, but it is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening with the cheap thrill that's going on, and uh, we will uh, talk more about this in the coming days.